Guys, I couldn't help myself. I whipped out my calculator app on my iPhone and I've been doing some calculations. You guys know I love to do this. Whenever we get some numbers about upcoming Apple chips, I can't help myself. I sit down and I start running some math, trying to figure out what the next Apple chip is gonna be. And now that we have some actual Geekbench 5 benchmark numbers for both the CPU and the GPU of the A15, well, I did it again. I've been calculating some stuff trying to figure out what all of this means for upcoming Macs. So today we're gonna to discuss my findings and I think they're pretty interesting. Okay, so before we get started, I have to put the disclaimer that this video is speculative, obviously. It's kind of weird, I keep saying that I'm making speculations and people are like, this is just speculation. It's like, yeah, that's the point. That's kind of the entire purpose of the video. But basically what we're gonna be doing today is comparing what we now know about the A15 with what we knew last year with A14 and the M1 chip to try to make some extrapolations, make some comparisons, and figure out what the A15 chip means for upcoming Macs. But before we do any of that, I figured it was worth revisiting what I talked about in my last video. So since I filmed that, a number of interesting little tidbits have come out. So the biggest one is that there are actually three variants of the A15 chip. Apple only talked about two. They talked about the four core GPU in the iPhone 13 and the five core GPU in the 13 Pro. And that was already a really interesting thing. They've never really done that, offering two different variants of the A15, but there's also a secret third variant that they didn't tell anyone about, and that's in the iPad mini. It uses a slightly downclocked version of the A15, which I suspect is for battery life reasons, considering that you're running a full fat iPad, but it's a much smaller device with therefore a smaller battery. And so it's not as powerful as the A15 that you would find in the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro. Now granted, this difference is pretty minor. How minor exactly, you might ask? Well, fortunately, we can figure that out. So as of the time that I'm filming this video right now, there are 16 entries for iPhone 13s. They're listed as iPhone 14 comma two, and they have a motherboard number of D63AP, in case you wanna go and find them on your own once more are added. But basically, there's been a sort of a question of like, well, how much faster is the A15 compared to the A14? Well, guess what folks? We now have a sample size of 16 results. So I just averaged all of them. I put them in a spreadsheet, I found the average and compared it to the A14. So across the 16 Geekbench 5 benchmark entries for iPhone 13, as of filming, the A15 has an average score of 4,609. The A14, on the other hand, has an average score of 4,112, according to CPU Monkey. That means that when we take into account a little bit of margin of error on both the A15 and the A14, the A15 chip would be about 9 to 15% faster than an A14, so we'll call it 12%. Now these gains are pretty minor, right? 12% on average isn't something that you're going to notice. You're not gonna be picking up your iPhone 13 and going, this is like 12% better than, than what I had previously on my iPhone 12. Like, no, you're not gonna notice that. But it is worth comparing to previous iPhone chips to see if the gains this year are greater or smaller. Well, last year, the A14 versus the A13, it was about 17 to 20% faster. Before that, the A13 compared to the A12 was pretty substantial, 27% faster. And before that, the A12 versus the A11 was eight to 10% faster. Now, interestingly, these Geekbench 5 entries show that the A15 is clocked at 3.23 gigahertz, which is up from 2.99 gigahertz on the A14. So I suspect that much or all of these eight to 15% gains are from the increased clock speed. So the story with the A15 is minor refinement, subtle gains, nothing really that crazy. But what does interest me pretty significantly is the GPU, because this year the iPhone 13 Pro is a whopping 55% more powerful than last year's 12 Pro, according to the Geekbench Metal Compute Scores. 
that is a really noticeable difference. Now, a lot of that can be traced down to the fact that that particular GPU has 25% more GPU cores than the regular iPhone 13 and last year's iPhone 12. But it is worth noting that the regular iPhone 13 with the four core GPU is still about 15% faster than last year's iPhone 12 Pro. These are some pretty good GPU gains. I touched on this in my video yesterday, which I would definitely recommend checking out because what it means is if Apple is starting to apply some of these GPU gains to the Mac chips, things could get really interesting. And that's where I wanna spend a good bit of time in today's video. So let's recap. The A15 with the four core GPU is 15% faster than the iPhone 12 with a four core GPU. The iPhone 13 Pro with a five core GPU is 55% faster than the iPhone 12 with the four core GPU. Those are some pretty incredible gains. And basically what this tells us is that if you go from the A14 generation with four cores and you increase the cores by 25% and then move to the newer A15 core, that yields 55% more performance. Now this is really interesting because if you'll recall, rumors about the upcoming M2 chip have included the possibility that Apple could be moving from an eight core GPU to a 10 core GPU. Now wouldn't you know it, that's a 25% increase in cores. So if Apple does use these newer A15 cores, which are probably clocked a little bit higher, then we could assume that compared to the M1 chip, it should be about 55% faster with this new 10 core GPU. So let's apply that to what we currently know. The M1 GPU scores around 21,698 in Geekbench 5 Metal Compute Test. So if we were to bump that up 55%, it would score 33,631, which puts it pretty close to the Radeon Pro 575 that used to ship in IMAX a couple of years ago. Now granted, yeah, that's an older GPU. It's not exactly a high-end GPU, but we're talking about the integrated graphics that would be found in the likes of a base model Mac Mini. Now, where things start to get a little bit hazy is when we talk about the M1X. That's the chip that we're expecting to see within the next month or so on the new MacBook Pros. And what we don't really know about these chips is whether or not they're going to be using the newer A15 cores, or even whether they would need to. So as we talked about earlier, the A15 runs at 3.23 gigahertz. That happens to also be what the M1 CPU runs at. So it's possible that the A15 core is really just an M1 core, which is a higher clocked A14 core. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but basically it's possible that the A15 is more like an M1 than it is like an A14 that's been boosted a little bit. So we don't know what Apple's plan is for the M1X, so let's compare it to some precedent that has a little bit more of a concrete number, and that is the A14 to the M1. The A14 was a four core GPU, the M1 is an eight core GPU. The A14 chip scores 89.77 in Geekbench 5 Metal, whereas the M1 scores 21.698, which means even though the GPU cores only doubled, the score increased by 141%. That's a really impressive scaling and is likely also due to clock speed and power draw changes when moving up to a higher system power package. So if we apply that to the M1 and even implement a 10% scaling penalty because you can't really just multiply things linearly and infinitely. Let's say that the M1X is 131% faster than the M1. That would mean the M1X would be about 50,122 compared to 21,698 for the M1. That's really close to the Radeon Pro 580X, which mind you is not a super powerful GPU, but we're talking about integrated graphics here. That's pretty crazy. And that's just when we're talking about the 16 core GPU and assuming that Apple does increase the system power a little bit as they did going from an iPhone to an M1. So that, that, that in itself is pretty ludicrous. But if we're talking about the 32 core GPU, things would be 
even more insane. Now, I don't think it would be fair to extrapolate the exact same way, right? Going from the 16 core hypothetical score to a 32 core hypothetical score, that's a bit of a stretch when we're really only basing this off of the low end jump from four to eight cores. But if you think about it just logically, the M1 has an eight core GPU and it's a pretty powerful one. So you'd be quadrupling the number of cores. Now, obviously you're not going to perfectly quadruple the performance, maybe 3.75 times because Apple scales their stuff pretty well. So that would yield a Geekbench score of about 81,000, which is really crazy. That would be trading blows with like the 5700 XT in a 2020 iMac. Now it is worth pointing out that we're talking about Geekbench 5 metal compute. That's not really indicative of real world performance, but those are the kinds of scores that we would be talking about here. And yeah, a 32 core Apple GPU would absolutely be trading blows with higher end and fairly recent dedicated GPUs in a laptop. That is really crazy. But honestly, what I think is most interesting is the 10 core M2. If Apple can apply those 55% gains like they did from A14 to A15 with the increased GPU cores to the Mac, then that would make the entry level chips really, really solid, not just in terms of CPU, but also in terms of graphics. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what Apple does next on the baseline. Now, as far as timing for that, we don't really have an estimate. So from what I've seen, the next gen, like the M2 chips, should be coming out hopefully on the earlier side of next year, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple makes us wait all the way another year until like October. But as for the M1X, well, we don't have to wait that long. It should be just around the corner. So I'm curious to know what you guys think of this. Obviously, as I mentioned, this is a hypothetical exercise, but if you really think about it, talking about 3.7 times the performance for four times the number of GPU cores, Things are gonna get pretty crazy and I can't wait to get my hands on it. And if you can't wait either, make sure to get subscribed and leave a like down below because, oh boy, things are getting really interesting. I'll see you guys in the next one.